Hello my soccer universe. Yes, we have a final and we have a final with a very much of an Anfield touch. If you want to say we have arguably the two best players in Africa going head to head. We also have a final between the nation that has won it by far the most and the nation that never has won it, although they have been knocking as of late and have been considered favorites for a long time. I am personally um, quite content with myself that I said I need to get an Egypt jersey that I got this one, yeah, and now I can wear this Egypt jersey. Little bit sad, teeny bit sad that Cameron did not make it, although I... yeah, what to say. We'll talk about that game later. Um, I think Senegal Cameroon would have probably brought in enough, uh, it would have brought in more emotions. On the other side, I think having it Senegal Egypt might be safer in a way so yeah gotta see that i gotta say um i thought both semifinals were rather entertaining um especially the first one the second one uh, was kind of you know, your uh, typically heavyweight fight uh with uh, you know the upper hand changing back and forth a few times and then yeah no goal scored it ended in a penalty shootout that uh, was almost predictable in its outcome in 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 a way but yeah, I would say, uh, talk first uh, semi-final between Burkina Faso and Senegal, which has a highly entertaining goalless first half. The one thing, though, that I gotta say, what's up with the head injuries? Uh, I think um, there was already early on uh, two players co colliding with the heads and that, you know, we had already a like, Senegal, like Cape Verde, have, 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 and then later, um, Kofi comes out, uh, punches the ball, and takes out the Senegal player and uh, hits the ground that also has to come off. At that point, I knew that uh, probably Burkina Faso will have it hard because I, I really rate uh, Kofi a lot. Um, the first half was highlighted by two penalty calls that weren't. <laughs> it was, I mean, that uh, part when uh, Kofi comes out, they take they take some play. If he doesn't play the ball, it's a penalty. And then I think there was a handball call on Tapsoba uh, in stoppage time, a rather long stoppage time. And even that was too short. I think they gave six minutes, and you, ha you had the feeling that there must have been, it should have been ten, in a way. And again, I don't understand why stoppage time is so limited at the AFCON when uh, we see it in other leagues now. Uh, it's extended all over. But nothing against the referee. Yes, he made two wrong penalty calls, but you know, that's why we have VAR. But I, I actually like the way he um, had the game in hand. And you know, with always a smile, uh, he had a runner statue, of course, <laughs> from Ethiopia. So yeah, it, it was it was kind of, kind of fun. But yeah, um, I gotta say that the first half Burkina Faso was actually quite threatening. It was a little bit back, 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 back and forth. It could have gone either way. Yes, Senegal is the better, was the better team, but um, I think they could have done something. And then uh, just when you thought in the second half, uh, game was going a little bit back and forth again at at the point. But just when again when you thought it's gonna fall asleep. Um, uh, Diallo, after a uh, cor 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 in Senegal at that point, had been knocking, uh, scores the, uh, the go-ahead goal with Koulibaly assist from a uh, bicycle kick. And at that point I thought, yeah, that Senegal threw. And that was even more uh, confirmed when uh, Sadio Mane doesn't give up, he gets a ball, goes around the player, where you think, you know, with a little bit more physical, he, he's not going past that, that, that player. And then even has the uh, presence of mind to not do it to it himself, but find uh, Idris Sege in the 76th, uh, who makes it 2-0. And at that point, yeah, Burkina Faso were done. And it has to be said, Petrat Atarare had missed a huge chance uh, early in that half, where, um, yeah, I think he took it on, on, on he, he wanted to take it take there with, with, with the other foot. And missed, missed the chance, but that was a huge chance that if they buried bur that, that could really have uh, opened up the, that game and made it very, very interesting. However, um, it was really, it's like 80 minutes, 2 0 Senegal, and anything else, uh, there's no way that um, Burkina Faso coming back. And then uh, Toure, with his knee, makes it 1 2 in the 82nd. Oh, we have 10 minutes, and Burkina Faso were trying, and there was a tiny fraction of a time where Senegal seemed like a little bit vulnerable and then uh, slapstick uh, I think it was Tapsoba who uh, they, he wants to carry the ball forward but uh, 
his own player is falling down and with the, the ball goes on his soles right into the uh, path of Saar, who then plays it on to Mane, who lobs the goalkeeper 3-1 Senegal. And that was that. Um, Senegal second consecutive final, I think a third overall. They lost two, one to Cameroon, one to Algeria. Um, it seems like it is their time at the moment, but uh, we have we 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 we, we, we see. I think they really like those dark green jerseys um, because they are carrying them forward. Now, the other semi-final of course was the battle of giants between Cameroon and Egypt, the two uh, biggest nations in Africa. If you just look at Afcon convinced, but in general, I think those two should be considered the um, the top nations in Africa. Um, and it was as a, it was not as an exciting game as the first semi final, but I felt that uh, especially between the around the fifteenth and the thirtieth, third, third, fifth minute, Cameroon really uh, were pressuring for a goal. The hit wants the um, the woodwork with uh, I should say aluminum work. I mean, well, uh, with a, a weird header from Abu Bakr. I, I I think it was not really written, really but it went there, went onto the uh, you know almost. Where the corner is, uh, but I think it was more, more, more about. They had a few chances, and Egypt really looked gassed. I mean, they played two uh, overtimes already, um, but uh, were at least defensively solid. One gotta say. Uh, as I said, there were not too many chances, but I think that come both teams in in a way always tried to uh, play forward. You you didn't see many back passes. They still tried to go for uh, forward, but were mostly. Um, uh, you know, no, 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 no trust by, by the ball. So Cameron had a little bit the, the more of the uh, more more the game. In the second half, I guess Egypt really came out like they did did, did, did against Mar Morocco. Um, much better uh, body language, much more going forward, and then they had also a, a, a humongous chance where uh, I think it was a back pass from Cam Cameron that Salah intercepts and um, Onana is coming out. And he just mishandled it. And I got to say, the pitch did not look good. And I know this is maybe a little bit, um, uh, you might think, think of it as a cock up, but I, I think the more I look about the pitch con on the pitch conditions, you can really tell that uh, even technically players, because such, some, something that doesn't happen to Salah, uh, pitch did, didn't look good. And then um, Onana can uh, kick the ball away from him because he kind of mishandled it uh, there and can we come back to it, I mean Salah immediately realizes what a chance have I missed him, I mean this shows with shows, 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 Van Nil and he lies down in the grass and he pulls out two big chunks of grass. I don't think he should be able to do that with a good pitch. Just think of that, it was, I've, I've never seen anything like that. I mean in, in the replay you you, you see he's holding two big chunks of grass and any, 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 any time the uh, camera zoomed in you could see a, 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 there were a lot of bumps on that field. Um, Cameron hit the woodwork twice but only on, on, touched the outside uh, with a, a great shot from far out and I always had the feeling that Cameron had a little bit more of the initiative but uh, Egypt looked more solid. Over time, kind of predictable, ended with no goal. Um, I knew as soon as this goes to overtime, uh, we'll, we, we could actually skip right to the pen pen shot because uh, both teams were kind of, you know, you don't want to risk too much. Uh, you have the penalties. I think for each, it was, it was always about penalties. I, I had the feeling that, yes, we have Salah, we, we can have this one moment of brilliance. But on the other side, um, you are you're physically not at the same level as Cameron were. However, I got I I gotta say Egypt was the more or, organized team. There's one another component, of course, that um, uh, the coach for Egypt um, was sent off uh, with a red card. Uh, Carlos Queiroz, of course, Portuguese uh, coach, 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 Portuguese coaching tool. Uh, yeah, he was always on the case, but I never thought he was so overbearing in in, in, in a way. Any case, um, I think one of the biggest mistakes I had the feeling uh, uh, exchanging is that in nine nine the Toko Ekan became off and Basogo came on. 
Basso go was atrocious. He slipped a few times. He mishandled passes. He was actually uh, to the detriment of Kaka, of, uh, of Cameron. He two or three times even uh, completely thwarted any good offensive efforts by Cameron. And I knew that yeah, he better not take a penalty. But then uh, who is gonna take a penalty? So it goes to penalty shoot. Cameron goes first, but you already should know that if you take a penalty shoot at home, the pressure is on you. And even though the stadium was not full, uh, thankfully so, because you know we don't we need we don't need another crush. I had a feeling that Egypt looked just a little bit more solid. And then um, you have the goalkeeper Gabalski, who uh, was only the second goalkeeper coming in, um, having kind of this already aura of saving penalties however uh the commentator here brought right up every time that he saved a penalty he was diving to his own left so abu Bakr steps up kabaski is going to his own left and he puts it to the other uh direction uh ciso converts and then uh mukudi and i already when i look when i was looking i thought oh no he's not ready and he goes to his right, goalkeeper dives to the to, to, to left, saves it. And it was not a well taken penalty. And then every other Cameron player goes exactly in that corner and does not hit it well. Uh, Lea didn't do it well, and then uh, Nile uh, Ngie, uh, just puts it wide. Uh, so all three are missed. Uh, Egypt only need to cover three penalties through Zizo, Abdel, uh, Monem, and uh, Lajan. And Egypt are through to the final. Uh, last thing on the jer jerseys, I really was a little bit chuckling that Egypt suddenly were playing in all white. I think if the Gambia can play in their home uh, outfit, Egypt just needs to change their shorts. Have white shorts, red and black down. And then you have even a flag outfit, which is classic e Egypt. I think I would have gone for that look. Uh, might have looked nicer in a way. So yeah, we have a final. I think the big winner of the second semi-final is, of course, Egypt, but also the Seneg uh, also Senegal, because uh, Egypt played three overtimes. You had one day more of rest. You are already there. Uh, I think it is made for Senegal. And that's why I actually think that Egypt has a chance. Because it's just too much going to Senegal's advantage um i'm a little bit biting myself because you know i said i barely can can see a north african side making it to the final well egypt it's egypt egypt can always do it so um <laughs> uh never discount them now uh the final also has, has has another hint and i will do a video later uh today they probably will post on saturday on the world cup qualifiers um it's not only senegal against egypt uh the liverpool final those two will meet in the playoffs and only one of them will make it to the world cup so uh, a huge 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 game and that draw we'll talk about that in the uh, more in the world cup um a qualification review that i'm gonna gonna do so the final is going to be played on sunday we have on saturday the third place matchup between burkina faso and cameroon probably will not watch that one who are the favorites well uh by my model Ray Raging uh, San Senegal are fav favorites, and I would even say uh, right full flex. So, as I said, I think uh, fatigue could be a major factor in there. But we have the makings of a really, really interesting uh, final, I gotta say. Uh, I hope it will not be decided by a fluke goal like the last one in the second minute. That's my only hope, but I think uh, it should all work out fine. And I'm a little bit excited. I'm, I'm, I'm a teeny bit excited about that. Any case, who do you think will win the AFCON? Um, let me know what you thought about the semifinals. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.